We are back again with another Legends of Runeterra video to cover the latest expansion, Rise of the Underworld. We recently covered the last expansion, Guardians of the Ancient, and how it brought some additional new champions and cards to the game, along with some cool customizations, and it was just a solid expansion overall to the amazing card game as Malphite is rock solid. Get it? Okay, moving on. This time around, Rise of the Underworld brings in some of the most changes Legends of Runeterra has ever seen. Over 40 new cards, 3 new champions, not to mention a massive number of balance changes that should excite the community as well. Hey guys, I'm Naisu with Ungeek, and here are some of the new things to look forward to in Legends of Runeterra Rise of the Underworld. Pity. Such power wasted on such ignorant minds. Before we dive into all the new things for patch 2.11, footage in this video was through a collaboration with Riot and we received early access. The content shown is not from the live server. With so many changes coming to this patch, we had a blast giving everything a good proper look. So let's get it started with the new champions. Just like in the last expansion, we saw three new champions introduced to the battlefield, and this time around, three new ones are coming yet again with some special lurking champions. Now, Champions are the cornerstones of deck building and players build decks around certain playstyles and synergies of the champions from the League of Legends universe. With over 60 champions now in the Legends of Runeterra card lineup, players get to experiment with the three new champions, Echo, Pike, and Rek'Sai. Starting it off with Echo. Never had luck, never needed it. Echo is a 4 mana champion with 4 and 2 combat stats and the quick attack keyword. In addition, he has the ability to create a fleeting time trick in your hand after he strikes. Echo levels up once you've predicted 5 times. After leveling up, Echo creates 3 chrono breaks in your deck. At level 2, he gains plus 1 plus 1 in stats and his strike ability makes the fleeting time trick cost zero. As a reminder, time trick is the new collectible two mana burst spell that predicts and draws a card. The chrono break, based off his ultimate ability in League of Legends, is an uncollectible card that's three mana slow spell that revives all of your allies that died this round. Afterward, you rally, giving you a chance to attack with them. Next up, we have Pike. So many names. Pike is a 4 mana, 2 and 3 lurker champion with the quick attack and lurk keywords and also a unique ability. Lurk is the new keyword introduced in the patch 2.11. We'll take a closer look at that shortly. When you declare an attack while Pike lurks on the top of your deck, he transforms himself into death from below. The spell that he becomes is a 4 mana fast speed spell with the lurk keyword that summons Pike and then he strikes an enemy. Pike levels up after 15 damage has been done, and after leveling up, Pike gains plus one plus one in combat stats and keeps his lurk keyword and transformation ability. The additional effect Pike gains when reaching level two is that once he kills an enemy, he strikes the weakest one. Pike's an interesting champion because he has the ability to change from a unit into a spell. It'll be interesting to see how all players incorporate that functionality with the card with other cards and decks especially vulnerable cards. The thing about Pike in a lot of Lurk cards is their stats are quite low for their mana cost. However, if you pull off enough Lurks, they become actually quite good aggro type cards. And the last new champion is Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is finally here, and is she a beauty? She also appeared in the awesome reveal trailer for the patch, hinting about her release before the official statement came out from Riot. Rek'Sai is a 3 mana, 3 for 6 lurker champion unit with the lurk keyword and an ability that triggers when she lurks or declares an attack that boosts lurkers allies everywhere, giving them plus 1 to attack, which is similar to what the new keyword does on its own. In addition to this power, she has the round and ability that places her back into the deck. Rek'Sai reaches her level 2 form once she's declared an attack with 10 plus power. 
Once she's leveled up, Rek'Sai creates three random lurkers in your hand, gains plus one plus one in combat stats, and keeps her lurk keyword and attacking ability and gains overwhelm. In addition, she loses her round end ability that shuffles her into the deck. During testing, I had a hard time figuring out how to exactly use Rek'Sai and her keywords properly. There's a lot to take in there. It might have just come down to me not using the right deck, but there's a lot of potential here for Rek'Sai. You can literally overwhelm your opponents with the amount of power Lurk can provide. In Rise of the Underworlds, they've introduced a new keyword yet again to fit the theme. The keyword Lurk powers up new Lurker followers anywhere with plus one in attack if you attack with allies while one lurks on the top of your deck. Some Lurkers have powerful bonus effects when Lurk activates for them as well. If you plan on trying out decks with Lurkers, think ahead. You'll need to be able to predict what's on top of your deck to use them effectively. If that's not a hint, I don't know what is. Just like last time, Riot introduced a new challenge to help out newer players understand the new keyword. So players can participate in the new challenge beneath the surface to understand how to use the new keyword. So last time in Guardians of the Ancient, there were only a few card changes. This time around, for Rise of the Underworld, Riot is bringing a ton of card changes and balances. In their reveal, Riot stated the changes will provide a better foundation to make live changes in the future. They want to keep the metagame fresh. Legends of Ruterra has changed and grown quite a lot since it launched, and changes are part of the process. They wanted to do some specific things such as targeting the top meta decks such as Irelia and Azir, Nasus and Thresh, Trundle and Lissandra, and the Draven decks. They also want to consider what's next. What decks are currently strong but not so popular? They don't want to nerf things down with the current top tier decks to simply replace them with another dominant strategy. The goal is to have a wide variety of decks that players can choose from and be successful with. They also mentioned focusing on region identities. Region identity is very important to Riot, the strengths and weaknesses for each region. Their playstyles and methods within decks to really make you feel like you're a part of that region. For example, buffing Ionia's flexibility with combat tricks and recall, buffing Bridgewater's incidental damage or big bets with bigger payoffs, and some nerfs to Targon to have more pronounced weaknesses rather than being good at everything. Leading into that, Riot's intention is to have all regions perform well. They don't want just a couple of regions being played because they are stronger than the rest, so they buffed up at least one champion in each region to ensure all regions had at least three buff cards. And lastly for card changes, Riot plans to have several releases coming up in various patches. 2.12 and 2.14. They also stated that they're trying to do these changes carefully and timely. They know card changes have a large impact on gameplay and overall meta, so they want to monitor these changes and go from there. Regardless, expect some big changes, new decks, and a lot of exciting new possibilities for all types of players. There was a huge update to the prologue, the part of a new player's journey that happens after the first four tutorial games and guides them until they unlock the region reward roads. Unlocking modes step by step, currently there's lots of modes in Legends of Runeterra. Some of those require a deeper understanding of the mechanics which may be overwhelming for a lot of newer players, myself included. The new prologue introduces the modes in a structured manner, allowing players to practice against AI, use challenges to learn, and then unlock PvP before finishing with the more competitive modes. You can still finish all of that in a timely manner, it's just not going to happen all at once. There's also some additional quests for players, win or lose, to gain XP to help progress through rewards. Also, more deck rewards for new players. Riot has added 4 additional complete decks as rewards for the prologue. By the time you finish the prologue, you'll have 7 starter decks. Current players also will receive the new decks in a loot box, and if you already own 3 copies of each card, 
you'll receive the deck list in your deck collection. For the release of Rise of the Underworlds, seven new archetypes were added to Expeditions. This allows players to experience the strategies and new champions, along with the new cards. This is especially useful for players to get used to the new keyword, Lurk. So don't forget to check those out. Shurima, Piltover and Zaun, and Bilgewater's region roads have been extended by four levels, each to coincide with the release of their new champions. And of course, we have some new additions to the labs with Echo, Pike, Swain, and Shivana being added as selectable champions. And lastly, with the Rise of the Underworlds, we have new personalization available. From champion skins such as Sandstorm Echo and Sand Wraith Pike, new boards, card backs and emotes, and of course new bundles in the store to get started with the new content. And there you go guys, whether you're a seasoned veteran to Legends of Runeterra, a casual player, or just beginning to take on the adventures in Riot's fun and flashy game, definitely check out the latest expansion of Legends of Runeterra, Rise of the Underworld. There's so much new content for players to experience and have fun with. Not to mention a focus on getting newer players adjusted and introduced to the wonderful game. What are your favorite things in the new expansion? Let us know in the comment section below. Again guys, I am Nicey with Ungeek. Until next time, thanks for watching. Future is whatever I'm making.